So last week in New Zealand, a thousand dollar tournament got taken out by none other than Mystic Mine. Piloted by the great Lucas from my local tournament. Shout out to Lucas, an absolutely incredible duelist. So Lucas won the day using Mystic Mine, taking out the likes of Dragon Link, Invoked Eldritch, and a whole bunch of other stuff there that you'd expect from a meta tournament. But why exactly did Mystic Mine win? Well, it's mostly because Mystic Mine works on a level that other decks simply aren't playing at the moment. A lot of decks try to either lock out through monster effects, combos through like thousands and thousands of cards, just to build these big, big boards of like impenetrable fortresses. But what is the one thing they all include? Monster effects. And what is the one thing that most decks aren't maining at the moment? Spell trap, negation, or destruction. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take Lucas's list and dive down the rabbit hole of EDO Pro to see what Mystic Mind can do against the meta. Just want to point out that this is Edo Pro, so in lieu of finding any real meta, we are up against Mech Knights. But that's fine for the testing of Mystic Mind purposes. So starting off slow, not a lot of gas there due to the Ash Blossom on the Extravagance, so just give him a Silent Wobby and set a Metaverse. Move Man moves. Mystic Mind comes down, and this could be enough for game. Draw and pass. Waiting for that extra card there for the left arm offering. There it is. Left arm offering, no Ash Blossom. Hit the countdown, pay 2,000 life points, and let it begin. Opponent's got nothing to do in their hand. Extravagance, getting me the field barrier, and my opponent decides to scoop there. Hey, would you look at that? Edo Pro delivers, and we find some meta deck in the form of Eldritch. Ash Blossom hitting the duality, and I've got no gas to give my opponent a monster for the Mystic Mind, so no point activating it. Uh, extravagance, this is get me something. Ah, Imperial Order, my one weakness. Yo, let's forget about that last game. Here we are up against UA, Ultimate Athletes here. So, you'll notice two things about games with Mystic Mind. One, your opponent realizes that they're on the clock and quits almost immediately. Or two, they're going to be the noble duelist and sit around for the entirety of the match. This is one of the ones where they do stick around and good on him. We immediately hit down Mystic Mine, count down on the second turn, and the waiting game begins. Let's skip to the end and see what happens. Almost 20 turns of drawing and passing later, and my opponent does have an impressive field, but it's nothing in the wake of Mystic Mine and Final Countdown. Set, and there we go. But what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? You get this match. Mystic Mine versus Mystic Mine. While I'm taking a more traditional route with a back row and burn cards, my opponent is going heavy on the special summon negations with the use of Fossil Dino Pachycephalo. While he's got the countdown going, it's up to me to try and burn my opponent with Cauldron of the Old Man before his countdown goes. Bandy's Fiend, that's really going to do a lot to me. Ah, another one. Countdown keeps building up and the cauldron keeps on boiling. So this still really highlights what an awful card Mystic Mine is. If I was playing any meta deck and I was staring down not only Fossil Dynapachycephalo, Vanity's Fiend, Moon Mirror Shield and Mystic Mine, I would not be in a very good spot, lock me out of special summons and monster effects. Luckily I am not playing meta, we are playing burn, so we just keep the countdown coming. And my opponent's being really good sport here, throws up GG bro, GG man of culture indeed. We both know what we're about and we know that was nothing short of a good duel. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, take care and hope to see you again real soon. Kakite.